Um, and then, but then we've got our um, our custom integration that uh, we built for Data API Builder. You see that you go builder dot. Uh, so this is our uh, distributed application host, and we want a Data API Builder. And then we're going to wait for that database that we're being provided with. So the the SQL Server. I'm very excited today to have Aaron with me because we'll be talking about a new project, a new open source project. Very excited. So you don't want to miss this episode of Open at Microsoft. Stay tuned. Hey, Aaron, I'm very happy to have you because we worked together on this project a little bit, but you definitely did most of it. So uh, can you tell us more about the uh, Community Framework Aspire? In fact, what it is, the Community Framework yep. Aspire Community Framework? Yeah, so um, I'm sure that if you've been in the .NET space, you've heard about .NET Aspire by now. Um, it's a, it's <laughs> a tool for like, you know, making things like local development easier, working with distributed applications, and a bunch of stuff like that. I'm, I'm not going to kind of rehash those talking points. Um, you can go check out the the episodes from like .NET Conf and Ignite and Build and all that sort of stuff to talk about um, .NET Aspire. But one thing that I really wanted to do is make sure that we had a way that if say you wanted to extend .NET Aspire, you wanted a integration to host something like, let's say, Olama, um, that you didn't have to you know, go out and write that yourself or scroll through NuGet and web searches to try and find you know, like an integration that someone had built so that you can do that. I wanted a, like a centralized community hub where all things like third-party extensions for .NET Aspire can live. Um, and that was kind of why I wanted to start the community toolkit project because I just I wanted I wanted that community space for for the the community that is already starting to grow around .NET Aspire. Okay, cool. And uh, I, like I know you have a demo, so I'm just like waiting for you to say, "Hey, let me show you." <laughs> yeah, that's probably, I mean that, that's that's probably the, the the best way. Like we, I mean, we can talk about this with you know just like hand wavy movements for you know the next ten minutes. But you're right. Like let's let's jump over to a demo and, and uh, have a look at it. So yeah, um, and, and just before before we jump, just to make sure, like if you never heard about Holama, so Holama is. Uh, some AI that you can run in a container locally instead of like having it hosted somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like, it, like you can pull like models, generally small language models. Like you're not pulling you know, like an open AI model necessarily because they're like hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes and you're going to need a data center's worth of GPUs. And like I'm on a desktop PC. I've got a good but GPU. Convenient. But so, like, if you want to, something to have local, you could yeah. do that. And then like this integration will give us the capability to just like say, hey, add me this, and we should have Olama added to our that's yeah. the expectation, right? That's what we yeah. are we want. Exactly. And you can integrate it into like semantic kernel or um like a, a library like Olama Sharp and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So here we are, though, in VS Code, um, and I've actually got the Community Toolkit project open. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and if I bring up the Solution Explorer, you'll see that, well, Olama is just one of the um, integrations that we've built so far. We've got a bunch of different hosting ones, and um, and Frank actually built one here, which is for Data API Builder, or DAB. Um, uh, and uh, if you want to do like REST APIs and GraphQL and stuff like that over databases, um, we got you covered with a, like an easy to get set up integration. But then there's like for different language runtimes. Like, let's say that you are building a distributed application and you've got something that's in um, like Go because that's more optimal for the the kind of thing that you're working with. Well, we've got an ability to host a, a Golang um, API and and just kind of get that set up um, nice and easily with inside your application. Um, so those are all the, the various integrations. Um, hosting integrations for stuff that happens, like they're, they're, they're the server side of things. And then we've got client integrations like um, Milia Search and Olama Sharp um, for consuming those um, host server in, uh, integrations. Uh, uh, like, a, like a good open source project, um, we have tests. And we actually have a very good test coverage because I've excluded a whole bunch of um, projects that we didn't want coverage written for. Um, but yeah, like we're, we're trying to make sure that this is really approachable. Like if you've got an idea for an integration for Aspire, that we have some good patterns in place that you you can you can contribute it, you can you understand how to write tests, and it can be maintained with confidence. Um, and then the last thing is examples. So like how do we how do we use these? And 
Um, actually, let's have a look at the Data API Builder, which is the, the one that, that Frank worked on. Um, I've mean, got to put him on the spotlight of, uh, of showing off uh, his code and his work. Well, I was not the only one working on that. I had help, but yes, I did contribute on that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so we've got our app host project. So if you're familiar with, uh, with .NET Aspire, so the app host is the thing that orchestrates all the, the various um, integrations or, or various things that you need, you know, services, databases, so on and so forth. Uh, and so inside of here, inside the sidebar again, um, we're adding a SQL server because we're going to need a SQL database to, um, to put uh, DAB in front of. Um, mm -hmm. We're adding a database to that uh, to that server, we're then um, seeding it with some initial data, uh, data and uh, the schema and all that kind of stuff. So this is just kind of your your fairly standard set up a database with um, with .NET Aspire. And, and, and here, in fact, we like the database will be created in a container. But like, if you already have a server, you just you could just add a connection string. Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. So so yeah. Like, that's a good point. All those it? first 13 lines are just because like I'm creating on the spot a database. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but yeah, like you said, if you if you had an existing um, SQL server instance in, installed on your machine, you could just use a connection string to uh, and and uh, Aspire has all uh, support for tackling that. Yeah. Um, and then but then we've got our um, our custom integration that uh, we built for Data API Builder. You see that you go builder dot uh, so this is our uh, distributed application host, and we want a data API builder. And then we're going to wait for that database that we're being provided with, so the, the SQL server. Um, we're going to wait for that to be ready, uh, and then we're providing a reference to that database. So what that will do is then in our DAB config file, um, we can access that as a connection string. So here is our connection string. So we've never had to check in a connection. We don't know what the connection details are going to be, but when the application runs, it all kind of wires up. And then we can pass DAB across to our Blazor application so that it's then got access to those REST endpoints and things like that. Um, and yeah, like we, we, so inside of the, the repo, we've got examples across all of the, the integrations that we've built. So like Olama and Golang and Java and so on and so forth. So that you can, again, if, um, if you, you're wanting to use them, we've got examples of how you can use them. If you want to contribute, you can see patterns on how you can build out an integration uh, and contribute that in and the sorts of things that you'd be um, expected as an external contributor coming to this project. Okay, that's great. So if people want to like see how it works, if they, they, they think they will they want to build a new integration or see like if they, they, they could be able to do it, uh, they can go there. But what if someone just have like their solution and they would like to use one of those extension? How does that work? Yeah, so um, again, here's, here's something that we started preparing earlier. <laughs> uh, like, while I might be comfortable being in VS Code and working as a .NET developer, I know like most of us are gonna be wanting to use Visual Studio. So um, I, here I'm, I've got a Visual Studio project where I've created a new .NET Aspire um, application in it. And uh, inside of here, um, uh, you can go right-click, add um, Aspire package. And I've just added a, a filter here to Community Toolkit. And you can see here are the different ones that we've got so far. So we've got um, like our uh, Alama, Alama Sharp for client integrations um, and so on and so forth. So like these are the packages that we've, we've published. Um, to NuGet, so you can just get them. They're just on the NuGet package feed, um, as like as all other um, Aspire integrations are. So I've already installed the Alama one here, and then I could come into my app host and be like, okay, I want um, Alama. So I'm going to say I want to create the Alama, and we'll go builder dot add Alama, and it just like it just appears because it's um, it's an it's an integration that that is. Um, exposed itself already to the app host um, builder that we've got. Uh, we'll call this, not builder, we'll call this Olama. And then because Olama is going to need a model um, provided to us, we're going to use the, uh, we're going to provide it with a model. So I want to say, let's go 5.3, um, I'll go 5.3 latest. Cool. So there is a model that we're going to uh, use, and then I could add that, say, as a reference here. So I want to add a reference to that to my uh, front end. Oops, don't need that there. So now my front end would be able to access that service. And if we were to launch that, just kind of want to show what would happen um, 
with, with this integration. But from a consumption perspective, these integrations that we're building in the community toolkit just operate the same as all the other integrations that exist for uh, for Aspire. So uh, working with the, the SQL databases or Postgres database or Redis or whatever the case may be that ships kind of core with um, .NET Aspire, um, we operate in the, the, the same sort of approach and, and we follow the same naming semantics and things like that that you would get there. All right. Uh, so here is our service up and running. Uh, and you'll see that, oh, there we go. Alarm is ready and we have our endpoint. And now that's up and now it is, uh, it's downloading that Phi 3 model that I've told it that it needs to. Now that's gonna take a couple of minutes cause it's like two and a half gigs and uh, let's not sit here and watch a model download. Um, that's kind of, kind of boring, but <laughs> they, like how, but how easy is that now? now in a few minutes time like i've got an ai a local ai model and i haven't had to worry about writing a con like a, a docker compose file i haven't had to worry about how do i start a container it's just there and ready and and usable that that's really the beauty of it because yes there's a few things that came with aspire with like a database and like a few redis cache and like like there's a few services that they they kind of like ship aspire with but obviously they didn't think about everything that exists. So we did add, like you did add like a few more in the community toolkit. And now like it's up to the community to like add more services as they see fit, like like making yeah. suggestion. And like for someone who would like maybe to like build an extension because they wanna make it easy for their user to integrate um, with Aspire. So what what they should do? What should they do? Sorry. Well, <laughs> the, I mean, um, there's obviously two sides to that. Like, if you want to learn more about the things that we've shipped so far, uh, you can check out our docs. Um, they're on the Aspire uh, documentation website. Um, so if you go to the, the Aspire documentation and then integrations, you'll find a section for community toolkit. Um, and you can read a bit more about the community toolkit, like the purpose of the project, how it's different from um, the official .NET Aspire um, project, uh, and then mm -hmm. you can read about our specific integrations, such as say our Llama integration, kind of walks you through getting started. Um, otherwise, come over and check us out on GitHub, um, github.com slash community toolkit slash aspire. Uh, we'll make sure to put all the link in the in the description anyway, so for people can click yeah. on it. Click on that. You don't have to try and like you know, read it out of the the address bar that's uh it's in the recording. <laughs> um, but yeah, in here we've got you know, information as well about the the various integrations that we've got, um, how to get started with it, um, how to use the the packages um, from NuGet, or if you want to use some of our pre-release builds, how to get access to them, uh, and also contributing guides. Like we, um, I feel like I'd like to believe we put a lot of work into making sure that it's um, easy to contribute to and and that it's easy to understand what's expected as a contributor. So we've got a lot of information about here uh, in here about how to do that. Um, and then finally, like if you if you are planning um, to build out an integration, we will kind of walk you through that guide of like the repository structure, what you're going to need from a development environment, um, and then our, things like our coding conventions, testing, and and so on and so forth. So yeah, we. are we're, we've had a, a, a number of community people have already approached us to, to contribute um, integrations and um, improvements to the integrations that we've already got. So I'm definitely uh, keen for anyone else that wants to, to get involved. Oh, I love it. I love it. So as we are wrapping up this episode, go click on that URL, go in the repo, fork it, put a star if you think it's a good idea. And uh, yeah, let's see you there. Let's see your ideas, feedback. Uh, and like read the, the contribution guide. Aaron, it was a pleasure having you on the show and uh, hopefully uh, we'll see you more. Thanks for having me and uh, I, I look forward to seeing what people build with .NET Aspire. Uh, see you next time. Bye, everybody.